Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm always looking for little receivers to pair with uh, my CW Flea transmitter. This is the little transmitter I co-developed with uh, Harry over at Zactech, and uh, it uh, it has an RF or it has an antenna input and a receiver output there, the little SMA connector, and it has a transmit receiver relay in there that, uh, when you go to transmit, grounds shorts to ground the receiver output and switches the antenna over to the uh, transmission section. You still get enough RF floating around in the air to get about a 30 over S9 signal on the receiver, so the receiver becomes your side tone. So I'm always looking for receivers to pair with it, trying to find a good match. And um, this might be it. This is the Texun uh, PL330. It's a little receiver I picked up off Amazon for about $80. Uh, it's... Um, your, your standard kind of pocket, you know, shortwave receiver. It does the long wave uh, band, which is 153 to 513 kilohertz, used in, uh, for AM stations in Europe a lot. The uh, medium wave standard AM broadcast band, the FM broadcast band, of course, and then the short wave bands from 1.7 megahertz to 29.99999 megahertz. Can't quite get to 30, I guess. <laughs> Um, it has a uh, both upper and lower sideband mode, which is what caught my attention, as well as, of course, AM and FM. Uh, but does it work for CW? You know, can it, can it get narrow enough for CW? Can it tune in a small enough step for CW? Um, you know, the bandwidth uh, narrowness, the filtering, can, you know, can that get narrow enough? How does it perform for CW? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Uh, so let's take it over here to the bench and give it a close look. It has a built-in telescoping antenna, which works okay. Um, I've actually been able to hear some uh, ham see single sideband communications using it. But if you're going to use it seriously, there's an antenna jack on the side, and it's a 3.5 mil, or uh, uh, yeah, 3.5 mil headphone style jack, but it's mono. And if you're going to use it, you'd need something like this which you can get on Amazon for just a few bucks. This is a BNC female to a uh, 3.5 mil mono. And I also found one with an SMA connector. You know, So you can find these 3.5 mil to PL259, if you want, um, cables. They're, they're all over. Or you could make one. This is just a mono 3.5 mil connector. Shield and tip would go to shield and tip on whatever antenna connector you're using. And then you can plug this in and hook the uh, little radio up to uh, as big of an antenna system as you want. So here's the little radio. All of your inputs are on buttons here on the front and two tuning knobs on the side. I've replaced this one <laughs> already. The stock tuning knobs are flat and they're flush, so you can't really spin them too easy because it's too smooth here to really spin it with your finger and you got to sit here and do that. And I found when you're in single sideband mode, um, doing that to tune, especially when you're in the lower steps, is a real pain. So I made this little knob with a crank, so I can just do that. Much easier. This is uh, going to be up on Thingiverse. I'll have a link to my Texan parts in the video description below. So, the little radio has a built-in clock. It has um, all the features we've uh, talked about before on, in the intro with the bands that it covers. Um, what does it do as far as bandwidth and, and uh, receiving? Oh yeah, by the way, on the side, DC in 5 volt is a USB, micro USB connector. That's how you charge the internal battery. That's all it does. If you're charging with a wall wart, you can't listen to the radio and charge at the same time because the incoming power is too noisy. If you're charging with a 12 volt um, to USB converter, you might be able to get away with listening to the radio while it's charging if it's not too RF noisy. Headphone jack, antenna jack, and that's pretty much all the jacks. On the back, access panel for the battery, that's it. And of course, the built-in telescoping antenna. Um, Front panel operation, and let's look at the bandwidth and all that that we're interested in for CW. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. 
and we will turn it on. And as you can see, I've already got it on 20 meters and I've got it on a low, ba uh, a narrow bandwidth. So your modes of operation are over here, right? Medium wave, long wave, if I click that, we're in the AM broadcast band, medium wave, it says MW here, shows you your frequency. Um, this is DBM, uh, the signal received in the noise floor up here. They don't give you an S meter, they give you DB, so I guess you're gonna have to figure out how to, to think in DB if you're gonna pay attention to that. Signal strength, frequency, mode, we're in medium wave. Um, there's uh, HF, FM broadcast band. So FM, medium wave, long wave, and then down here, short wave, SW has an up and down and that moves you through bands. 15 megahertz, 17650. These are the standard AM broadcast areas. 19 megahertz, 21, 26. But once you're in this mode, you can punch in a frequency directly. So if I want to go to 20 meters, 14100. There we go. And then I can change upper or lower sideband here. We'll go to upper sideband. And then we have this AM BW uh, bandwidth. That's our filter bandwidth. Right now it's at 500 kilohertz. That's what that 05 means. 1.2 kilohertz, 2.2 kilohertz, three and four are your selections. So we can definitely narrow this down good for CW. I'll leave it at 1.2 for now. Um, upper sideband and lower sideband, we could switch our sidebands. Right now it's an upper sideband. There's lower sideband. With the CW flea, you tune it by sweeping the VFO until you hear it in the receiver. So you bring the pitch in to match whatever you're listening to or whoever you're going to want to answer before you transmit. That's how the tuning works on the CW Flea. Okay, let's hook it up to an antenna and see what we can hear. So I've got my end fed half wave for 40 meters. I'm going to plug that in. And then we're going to tune a little bit. Now tuning steps. Here's the step. Right now there's a little triangle right there above the zero. I don't know if you can see that. That means that we're tuning in um, we're tuning in one kilohertz steps right now. We can change that and tune in 10 hertz steps. So we can do some fine tuning if we're looking for CW. I'm going to switch back to one kilohertz. Oh, actually that's five kilohertz. There we go. And we'll get down here to the CW area. It might be a bit early for 20 meters. The sun isn't up yet. Let's go to 40 meters. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying you're noticing, I'm sure, is the automatic gain control is pumping every time I tune. So as I shift one kilohertz, you'll hear the automatic gain drop and then come back up. And that's kind of annoying, but when we go to the smaller step, we go down here to 10 hertz, it doesn't pump when you tune. So if we're fine tuning, it's nice and clear until you tune past one kilohertz. Here we go. That sounds nice, doesn't it? And we can narrow the bandwidth down. It does not have a way to change the automatic gain control. It's always gonna pump. So as you can hear, that's quite nice for CW. But did you hear that, how it was a little distorted at first, at the first key down? That's because the automatic gain control had the receiver up at a very high sensitivity, and as soon as that strong signal came in, it dropped down. So that first initial um, 
element was a little distorted. And you can hear that you, on, the, on the initial, right there. It's kind of like a buzzy sound because it's just a little too high. When I'm using this with the transmitter, that's going to be more apparent. But it's still not bad. You could listen to that and copy it. That's the only thing I would wish. If, if there was anything I would wish for this, it would be that it you could adjust the automatic gain control. But it is what it is. I think it's usable. So let's hook it up to the uh, CW Flea and see if we can make a contact. Nope, guess he couldn't hear me. Couldn't hear me. Nope. Jeff in Oregon. Okay, successful contact up to Oregon. The scratchy sound on the first key down is the AGC on the receiver because it's turning the gain way up right now. And I'm hitting it with about a 30 over S9 signal level so it distorts and then it pulls the gain back and then we can hear ourselves. So that's the only real issue with using this receiver in this manner with a uh, transmit receive switch is that drive is, is a little too hot at first, but it doesn't hurt the receiver. It's only about 30 over 9 signal level, so it doesn't hurt the receiver. It just makes that first key down a little distorted sounding, but you get used to that and you can just work through it and then this becomes your side tone as you're, as you're transmitting. So it definitely does work and it seems to work fairly well as a CW receiver. Well, so there you go. The little uh, PL330 is definitely usable as a receiver uh, for working CW or probably single sideband contacts if you had the appropriate transmitter. Um, it receives pretty well. It's sensitive enough. Uh, as long as you're using an external antenna, it, it works you know, really well. You know, So I think that's one that I would, uh, I would definitely put in a, uh, an emergency kit along with a little transmitter like that just to have something to try to make contact with if you were needing to. Uh, the internal lithium battery seems to hold up pretty well. Um, it's replaceable too, by the way. Right there. Uh, BL5C is the battery type. 
which I think is a fairly common battery type. So, um, yeah, the Texan PL330. Nice little receiver. I'm happy with it. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.